Amen. Let's stand tonight. We want to live the way He wants us to live as we open our service tonight. I want to live the way He wants me to live. Is that your desire? I want to give until there's just no more to give. I want to love Oh, love till there's just no more love. I could never, ever out love, oh, the Lord. I want to live the way He wants me to live. I want to give until there's just no more to give. I want to love, love till there's just no more love. Oh, I could never, ever. Oh, do you love the Lord Jesus this morning? If you love him, you want to live the way he wants you to live that's by his word that life that he places in us it will amen live out that life amen so good to be in the house of the lord tonight on a midweek service so let's just invite his presence tonight heavenly father god we just thank you lord we're just happy in our hearts to be here lord on this beautiful day lord that you've made god and lord it's Lord, just, it's a privilege to be, Lord, gathered with your saints tonight. Lord, we're just rejoicing, Lord, in our experience, Lord, and we, we thank you for, God, again, a place that we can come together. Lord, as we sing worship and praises to you, we just ask that you come down tonight as you do, Lord, and give us strength, Lord. Correct us, Lord, and let us, tell us where we're wrong in this hour. We want to be right. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Kiev F, oh, I want to see him. Amen. Praise his name. As I travel through the land, singing as I go, well, pointing souls to Calvary, toward the crimson flow, well, many arrows pierce my soul from without within. Oh, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Well, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Now when in service for my Lord, dark may be the night. Oh, but I'll cling more close to him, he will give me light. For Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. Oh, but my Lord, goes ahead and leads whatever be tied. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. And on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. For cares all past, I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. And when in valleys low I look toward the mountain height, and behold my Savior there, he's leading in the fight. Oh, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low. Oh, he's guiding me, I can see as I onward go. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory. 
Let me lift my voice. Oh, cares are all past. I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. And when before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark. He does safely keep. Oh, and he leads me gently on through this world below. Well, he's a real friend to me and oh I love him so and oh I want to see him look upon his face there to sing forever of his saving grace and on the streets of glory let me lift my voice because cares all past home at last ever to rejoice what a day that'll be, brother, sister. Amen. It's a reality for those that are chosen, blood washed. Amen. Let's sing it again as our brothers come to take the offering and tithes tonight. Oh, I want to see him. And oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. Oh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. Oh, on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Oh, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Ever to rejoice, amen. No sorrow, no sadness over there. Oh, praise his name tonight, amen. Let's just bow our heads then and ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering and the tithes. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, and we love you tonight, Lord. And we think about where we'll spend eternity, Lord. And Lord, as your prophet said, oh, we'll get there, Lord, and here's your streets of gold, here's your mansion. But Lord, for that true redeemed bride, Lord, our thoughts will be just let me look upon his face. Let me look upon him. That's heaven, the one who redeemed me and saved me. All down through all eternity, Lord. Well, thank you. Father, as we take the tithes and we take the offering, we pray that you bless it. You bless your people as they give. They give to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. This king's give F, amen. Amen. Oh, where could I go? Tell me where could I go? Where can you go tonight? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, when you're needing a friend to help me in the end. Oh, where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Oh, seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, needing a friend to help me in the end. Oh, where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, He abides. Yes, He abides. Oh, hallelujah, he abides with me. Well, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. For the, you have that comforter tonight as you stand. Let's stand and amen. Well, he abides, sing it now. He abides, oh, hallelujah, he abides with me i'm rejoicing night and day as i walk that narrow way for the comforter abides with me and when the roll is called up yonder when the roll i want to be there brother sister i want to hear my name when the roll is called to be on, will you be there? When the roll is called to be on, I'll be there. Oh, when the roll 
is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is oh i want to be there yes i will be there amen we believe tonight you believe and let's sing that chorus as we take our needs i can i will i do believe i can we've heard it we've recognized it now we're going to act on it and believe oh i can i will i do believe that jesus heals me now oh i can i will i do believe i can i do will i do that jesus answers prayer i will i do believe that jesus answers prayer sing it again now oh i can i will i do believe i can i will i do believe i can i will i do believe jesus answers prayer he answers prayer brother sister if we approach him with a sincere heart an honest heart and believe pull that lever of faith as we read this request tonight from our brother fred we're going to believe with our brother he asks tonight brothers and sisters please remember our friend ed and lena they're both going to have surgery in the next few days amen so god knows the need friends of brother fred and god has come on the scene for them and guide the surgeon's hand and just be with them amen and every unspoken request tonight just by your raised hand brother keenan Amen. A young girl by the name of Anna that was in the hospital with Brother Keenan's mother and was just real kind to her. And her own mother was going, went through a procedure also. And just and God to just give her more time. Here's her mother's time. Give her her mother more time and just a special blessing upon her for being a blessing to your family. Amen. Every unspoken request tonight. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come tonight, Lord, with our needs, Lord. We believe, Father. God, we come bringing this, these Ed and Lena, Lord, and Brother Fred's friends, Lord. And God, what their need is, Lord, they're going to be having surgery. So if you just be with them, God, and guide their surgeon's hand, Lord. They're not Christians, Lord. I'm sure my brothers lived that life before them and witnessed to them, Lord, that God, they'll just, Lord, want to live for you. Lord, touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord, their bodies. God, and just heal their soul if they don't know you, Lord, tonight. And God, a little special blessing upon this one, Lord. Acquaintance, Lord, a person that helped out. Brother Keenan's mother was a huge help, and Lord, her own mother was ill and at the point of death also. God, that just we pray for her, Lord, tonight, for the mother, Lord, that you'd spare her life and extend her life. And God, a special blessing upon this, this one, Lord. It's been such a kind person to our Brother Keenan's mother and his family. Lord, those things, Lord, they don't go undone, Lord. People are kind, Lord. You mention it in your word, Lord. So you're chosen, Lord. God, ask a blessing for her tonight, Lord. And Lord, every unspoken request tonight, Lord, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. 
God, and we just ask that you meet each one, Lord. You know the need tonight, God. We actually grant it in your name, the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. We're going to be listening to a message tonight. Jehovah Jireh. Preached in July, July 5th, 1962. So, so the brothers preparing the tape, a, the message, amen. Amen. Let's just go and, and pray tonight. Amen. God, to just anoint us and give us that spiritual food. Revelation for the hour. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, now as we just change the order of the service, Lord, to your word, Lord. God, Jehovah Jireh, Lord, we pray. We know you have something in this message tonight, Lord, for your bride, Lord. It's spiritual food in due season, Lord. And God, we just pray that you calm our spirits, Lord, and our minds, Lord. And let us separate, Lord, from all the things of the day and things that occupy our being, Lord. And give you our undivided attention, Lord, and be a word. It's the most important thing in our life, Lord. Lord, we ask that you anoint us, anoint our hearing and our minds, and let it drop down in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Brother Ralph, you can, or Brother Josiah can start the message. Truthfully, I say it with all my heart. I don't know when he's coming. None of us does. But truly, I don't believe there'll be another generation. I believe Christ will come in this generation. I don't know what time. Now, it may be tonight or it may be 10 years from now or 20. But I believe he'll be in this generation. I'm believing that. If he doesn't, I want to live just like he was anyhow. Because I know that it may be my last day or your last day. And then remember, if we go before he comes, we will be up and in his presence or raised before the others are changed. The trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Look at the order of the resurrection. See, God knows that we long to see our loved ones. And if we got there to meet him first, we'd be looking around and see if mother, dad, and the rest of them was there. But see how the Holy Spirit in his wisdom, we meet one another first. And then when we get there and sing Amazing Grace, that's when there's going to be a time of worship. Amen. You think I act funny now, watch me up there. <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful time for me and all of us when we get there. Now, let's read somehow the blessed old Bible here tonight. Let's turn over to Romans, the fourth chapter, and read just a portion out of the book of Romans. I want to read two places tonight, out of Genesis and out of the book of Romans. Now, in the book of Romans, fourth chapter, 17th verse, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was written, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offense and was raised again for our justification. Oh, how I love that. That's one of my favorite scripture readings of the Bible. Because it's so 
positive what God was, what he promised and swore that he would do. And now I chose this subject because that I think that on any meeting to see the faith that we saw exercised here last night, that not a feeble person among us, but what was healed, what the power of God came and what he did. Then I thought if we could build around something positive, making a, an achievement to a goal, then how wonderful it would be when we could hit that great night or hour of climax. And we must remember that nothing can be done without faith, and it first has to be confessed. For he is the, he is the author of faith, we know that, and that nothing can be done without faith, and without faith it's impossible to please God. And now he is the high priest of our confession. Now the, the King James here in the book of Hebrews puts it a profession. To profess and confess is the same thing. Profess and confess. Confess means to say the same thing. By stripes, I am healed. See? Now, by his life, I am saved. And now, then first we've got to confess it and he sits as a mediator, and the only mediator between God and man, and he sits there to make intercessions upon what we confess that he has done. What a, what a sound, solid thing that is. Amen. And now, I want to read another scripture found over in the book of, of Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And let's begin reading here about the seventh verse. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him up on the, on the altar, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham! Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou, that thou fearest God, and seest thou withhold not the only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by the horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up, on, up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. What I want to take the subject there, if it would be called a subject, Jehovah Jireh. The word means the Lord will provide for himself a sacrifice. Uh, if he doesn't have one, he can provide one. I'm so grateful for that. Now, this great subject, I'm now reading there that Abraham staggered not at the promise through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God. Now, Abraham was the one that God made the covenant and promised to. And Abraham, not him only, but his seed after him. Abraham and his seed. And now, remember this now. If we are dead in Christ, we are Abraham's seed. If we are born again. Now, let's be real careful about this now as we study this lesson. And now if you'll 
listens closely, I'm sure the Holy Spirit will reveal to you and you'll catch the whole, and then it will light the city and everything around you. If we just take our time and catch the idea, what the Holy Spirit's trying to get to us. Now, Abraham called, uh, was given the promise, uh, Abraham and his seed. Now, there's so much today, friends, that's called Christianity that's not Christianity. Amen. Now, I just hate to say this, but I would rather stand here and be real popular among the people and, and everybody patting you on your back and everything like that, but then I've got to meet that group at the judgment Amen. to give an account for it. So uh, I just have to be honest. Now we can look upon congregations and upon the world today, upon what's called Christianity, and find out it's a million miles from Christianity. And it's predicted in the Bible to be that way. Now, many accept Christ in the way of saying, well, I believe him. Well, the devil believes the same thing. Amen. See? And many of them try to accept it upon emotion. Say, well, I spoke with tongues. I danced in the Spirit. I've seen witch doctors do the same thing. Yeah. And devil dancers in Africa. Right. Sure. Speak in tongues and drink blood out of a human skull and call on the devil. My mother is an Indian, half Indian, and, and her people, I've seen them take pencil and lay it down like that and watch a pencil run and write in unknown tongues and stand there and interpret it. Calling on the devil. Sure. See, you can't go by emotions. See, your life that you live testifies what you are. See, no matter what kind of sensation, you cannot base Christianity on any sensation. It's a lie. Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. Amen. Not by their profession, not by what they say. And Jesus also said, you draw nigh unto me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. That's, that's their profession. Yeah. See, your life tells what. And if a man says that he believes God and denies one word of this Bible or changes it in any way, why, it's got to be wrong. You said it doesn't make any difference about these little things. It certainly does. One little word is what takes us in all this trouble. Not disbelieve it, but just misplace it. Eve just had Satan to mis just give her a reason. Down at Brother Williams, I just got you going through that down in Santa Maria. That's the thing that brought us from the Garden of Eden and caused every sick child as I prayed for a little spastic baby laying there a few moments ago coming in. What caused that? Because Eve never disbelieved it, but she just took a reason that it would be reasonable this would be all right. And it caused every death, every sickness, every sorrow, every heartache. And how are we going to get back in if it, call, if it caused 6,000 years of this? How are we going back with anything less than every perfect word the way it's written? The devil won the battle over the human race by reasoning with the human race. Just reason why it stands to reason this would be. It stands to reason. If the reasoning is contrary to the Word, then the reason is wrong. The Word is right. Just the way it's written. Don't put any private interpretation. Just say it the way it's written and believe it like that. God's took care of it. It's just exactly the way it's supposed to be. So let's just believe it that way. Now, it's the Word. Every Word, every uh, the Holy Spirit in a man... Every sentence of the Bible, the Holy Spirit in you will punctuate with Amen. Because the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. Amen. And if He's in you, how can He say, Well, that was for another age, that was for this, or that was for that. How can He say that and be the Holy Spirit in you? Amen. Can't do it. He has to say Amen to it. Amen. Now, as I said the other day, the first thing God gave His people to fortify them was the Word, and He's never changed. He can't change. Now, creeds won't work, denominations won't work, education won't work. None of these things, every one of them has totally failed and will fail. There's only one thing that'll be worked, that is the Word. Amen. And the only one way we can come by the Word is by the blood. Yes, yes. Only place that anybody ever worship God 
had to come under the blood. No other preparation at all. You can't come under the name of Methodist. You can't come under the name of Pentecost. You can't come under the name of Catholic. There's dozens of Catholic churches different, different from one another. The Orthodox and Greek and Roman, and they're broke up as bad as the Protestants. The Protestants, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Catholic, or whatever, are all different kinds. And there they are, see? But there's one ground for fellowship. That's under the blood. Amen. And the blood is a life, and it'll always agree with the Word. Yeah. Always with the Word. Now, we know the life is in the male sex. It's in the blood, the hemoglobin. Through there, the hen can lay an egg. But if she hasn't been with the male bird, it'll never hatch. Certainly, it's not fertile. That's the way I've made many rude statements in it. Female bird can lay a nest full of eggs, and she can be as loyal to them as she wants to be. She can hover them and, with her wings and turn them every few minutes so they'll be sure to hatch, and, and she gets so hungry and fast while she's on the nest to be loyal to those eggs until she gets so poor she can't fly off the nest. If she, then they're got to hatch because it's life. Some time ago, I was eating dinner with a, an old Methodist preacher. And I heard the agriculture hour on from, from uh, Louisville, the 4-H club was talking. If they had a machine that could put out a grain of corn just like they grow in the field. Said it would make the same kind of corn flakes, same kind of corn bread, just the same corn. Cut it like that, put it under the light, take it to the laboratory. It's the heart's in the right place and everything. And the same amount of moisture, calcium, potash, whatever it's in the corn is laying just exactly said, if you ever took a handful out of the sack that's grown in the field and the sack that the machine mixed or made and mixed them up, you could never tell the difference with your natural eye or cutting it apart or any science could ever find the difference. The only way you could tell the difference is bury them. Yeah. That tells it. A man might look like a Christian, he might act like a Christian, he might impersonate a Christian, but unless he's got the germ of life in there, he cannot rise again. Yeah. Got to have that life germ in there. Have eternal life. And any person who studied Greek knows that that eternal comes from the word zoe, which means God's own life. That become a part of Him as you are a part of your Father. You become a part of God. And God's own life is divided and put in you. And it can't die because it's eternal. Anything that begins, ends. But He never did begin, so He cannot end. He's eternal, and you're eternal with Him. Can no more die than He can die because you've become a part of Him. You're born of Him. Amen. And just keep talking about that, and I'll never get to this lesson. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to be a Christian. I, 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 I wouldn't trade places with nobody in the world, not presidents, kings, if they give me the whole world so I could live a million years. After there, I would die. After a million years, but now, a million years, well, I won't be nothing. Now, we just keep on living. No doubt. So it's great to be a Christian. Talking of Abraham, let's go back. Now, we are Abraham's seed if we are in Christ. And then if you are Abraham's seed, you have the same faith that Abraham had. Because it was his faith that we're talking about, especially in the church now. It's the royal seed of Abraham. There was two seeds of Abraham. One of them was the natural, Isaac. The other one was Christ, the promise. So through Isaac, Israel was blessed. Through Christ, he became the father of nations. See? So the royal seed, how much greater that would be than the natural seed of Abraham. So if you are in Christ, you have a super seed, a super to what Abraham was because you come by the royal seed, Christ. If you are dead in Christ, then are ye Abraham's children. And you have Abraham's seed and Abraham's faith and Abraham's faith was in God's Word regardless of what took place. Amen. He called those things which were not as though they were because God said so. What a promise. Now, let's go back a little piece and base our thoughts. Let's go back to, before we get to Jehovah Jireh, to Abraham, let's go back, fall back a little bit in the Scripture. Let's go back to... Uh, the twelfth chapter, we read here in the twenty-second chapter. Let's go back to the twelfth chapter, the covenant made to Abraham. Now, the covenant, there had been three, two covenants. 
Now, God is perfected in threes. We know the numerals of God. Perfection in three, worship in seven and twelves and forties, temptation, fifties, jubilee, and so forth. God in his, in his numeral. Now, God is perfected in three, like Father, Son, Holy Ghost, justification, sanctification, baptism, Holy Ghost, and so forth. Now, there had been two covenants. One of them was the Adam covenant. God made a covenant with the man, if you will, I will. And he broke it. Then God made a covenant with Noah. That's the Noah covenant. And it was broke. Now he's making the Abrahamic covenant. And the Abrahamic covenant, according to Genesis, the 12th chapter, it was given unconditionally. Therefore, it's eternal. Because it's unconditional. Not if you will, I will. He said, I have. I've already done it. Not I will do it. I have done it. I, oh, that, that base is faith. See? Not God's determined to save man. He make a covenant. If you will, I will. He'd break it. Another one. You will, I will. He broke it. Man can't keep his covenant. So God saves man by his grace. Under a covenant that's unconditional. Amen. Unconditional covenant. Oh, my never ending. That was all of it. Three perfect. Noah, Abraham, and uh, I mean, Noah, uh, Adam, Noah, and Abraham. Now, that's the reason we are Abraham's children. That covenant cannot be in, never in, because it is unconditional. It, it is because you do something. It's because God did something. Yeah. Not because you chose God. God chose you. Do you believe that? Yeah. People say, oh, Brother Branham, I sought God and sought God. And... You did not. I hate to tell you that, but you didn't. God sought you. Yeah. It was God seeking you. Jesus said, you haven't chose me. I chose you. No man can come to me except my Father draws him, and all the Father has given me will come to me. Now, see, it wasn't. No man can glory in anything. It's God. Oh, how marvelous to see the, the real grace of God, how it, and how people has tucked the message of grace and made a disgrace out of it. Like my precious church and you precious Baptist people, when you mess up grace like that, you've really got it in a mess. <laughs> Someone said to me not long ago, said, Brother Branham, now you know you was a good Baptist. I said, I still feel that, but I've just raised up a little higher. He said, well, now look, said Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. How much more could Abraham do but believe? And he said, when we believe God, we receive the Holy Spirit. I said, how different from St. Paul? St. Paul said in Acts 19, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Not when you believe, since you have believed. He said, well, Abraham believed God. That's all he could do. I said, true. But then God gave him the order of circumcision as a confirmation that he had received his faith. And if he has never circumcised you yet by the Holy Ghost, he hasn't received your faith yet. That's right. That is the circumcision of the heart and spirit. God gives the Holy Ghost as a confirmation he's received your faith. Now, if you stop believing and scrumbling around and just believe God, God will circumcise that heart and that cuts off all unbelief. Circumcises the world and all unbelief away from you and then you stand the word alone. Jesus said, if you abide me in my word and you then ask what you will, it'll be given to you. Amen. That's what's matter at the church today. It's under emotion. It's under education. It's under creed. No wonder it's smothered down. See? So we need a circumcision to cut the whole thing away. Come back to God and His Word and believe it the way it's wrote there. And don't argue with it. Just stay with it. God made a promise. God keeps His promise. He can't do nothing else but keep His promise and remain God. Now, this unconditional covenant, not if you will, I will, but uh, I will later on, or something like that. I have already given the land to you and your seed after you. Amen. See, already done it. It's a finished work. You said to Abraham he did that. Yes, not only Abraham, but his seed after him. And if we were Abraham's seed, it's a finished product. Those who he foreknew, he called. Those who he called, he justified. Those who he has justified, he has already glorified. What you scared about? 
Amen. That's right. And the Antichrist in the last days, according to Revelation, deceived all that dwelt upon the face of the earth, whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life since the last revival. No, before the foundation of the world. That's when your name was put in the Lamb's book of life, when the Lamb was slain. God spoke the word. It was in his thinking and his thought. He spoke the word and everything happened just at that time. This is just God's seed materializing. That's all. His words coming down. Now, when the light of God flashes across that, quickly that seed recognizes it because it's born of God. It's Abraham's seed, foreknown by God. That's why the light flashes is to catch that seed. If it, we've had a revival. Joel said we fussed so much about latter rain. Had movements called latter rain. Latter rain, former rain, inner rain, outer rain. I was reading the other day. You know what former rain means in the Hebrew word? I can't call it right now. I never wrote it down. It skipped my mind. But former rain, the first rain means a rain of teaching. The second rain is a spirit that comes up on what's been taught and produces a crop. Why is it we had such a revival? Pentecostal, Baptist, all the other trees put forth their buds, as Jesus said they would be. And what have we hatched out? The Baptist said they got a million more in 44. Look at the Catholic, how they increased. Look at all denominations. Look at Pentecost. What do we do? We sow denominational seeds. We reap the denominational harvest. While the church ought to be on fire for God right now, if there had been a word seed so back there and there'd be signs, wonders, miracles, and that church would be together, one heart, one accord, and marching towards Zion for the rapture. Right. What did we do? We had intellectual speeches instead of the Word. We had reasoning against the Word and everything else. We got to get back to the Word. God, hey, we'll do it. God said, I will restore, saith the Lord, all the years that the canker worms and palmer worms eat. It's going to bloom out in the evening time. There will come forth one with a message. He'll restore the hearts of the faith of the children back to the faith of the fathers. He promised it in Malachi 4, and he would do it. Return them back again. Now, that isn't the Elijah that was talked of in the Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 11, if you can receive it, John, there was the Elias that was to come of Malachi 3. Behold, I send my messenger before my face. Malachi 3. You find that? But remember the Malachi 4, the message comes, the terrible day of the Lord shall come and shall burn up the whole earth and the righteous shall walk out upon the ashes of the wicked. That ever happened after John? No, if that was it, then the scripture has lost its hold. It said something it wasn't so. We got 2,000 years since then, the world hasn't been burned. So, not at all. Neither has the righteous walked out upon the, the, the ashes of the wicked. But we're still waiting for that something that's going to take the faith and restore the faith of the children back to the original Pentecostal tree that the canker worm eat up, the Roman canker worm, caterpillar, all their denomination and creeds eat it down. God said, I will restore it again in the last days. It will be restored. God shall send the Holy Ghost in such a way upon planted word that will restore. The word of God is a seed that a sower went forth to sow. Now, the covenant was given unconditionally. Now, Israel, the seed natural, exchanged that and lost it in Exodus 19 when they made that rational thing to take away the grace and accepted law in its place. What a rational mistake that Israel made there. Look, God, after he made the covenant with Abraham, Grace had already provided a prophet deliverer for him down in Egypt to carry out the word of Abraham. Remember Moses under the bush? God said, I've heard the cries of my people and I remember my promise. Before there's any law, grace provided it. Grace had provided a sacrifice for their guilt, a lamb. Grace had provided a covenant. Circumcision has already been provided before law. Grace had provided a pillar of fire to lead them, following a prophet, a security that the prophet had told them the truth. It was the word that he was talking about. They know that God promised it, and here was a pillar of fire confirming it. What a devil's security! Amen. 
grace had done that, but they wanted something for themselves that they could do, have their own creeds and denominations and what more, make Pharisees, Sadducees, and something they could do themselves. Man's always trying to save himself. You can't do that. Amen. God's already done it. Amen. You just have to accept it and believe it. Pillar of fire to lead them and guide them, to lead them in a way of power. Grace had provided a power to condemn their enemy and to make them free. The power had already been given. They crossed the Red Sea. They smote uh, Pharaoh. They'd done all these things with grace. And then they exchanged grace for a law. But that had nothing to do with the royal seed of Abraham. The royal seed has tried to do the same thing, go back under some kind of a creed. Instead of taking grace in the Word and believing it. With that, there will come forth a royal seed. We'll get that after a bit. A little further on. Let's go back now to Genesis 12. God called Abraham by grace. Not because he was a different person. He was just Abraham. Just an ordinary man. Not because he was a priest or a dignitary. He was just a farmer. He come down from the city of uh, the Babylon Tower with his father. And they went to Chaldea, uh, Ur of Chaldea. And there was a farmer, perhaps farmed in the daytime and raised his food. He had married his half-sister, Sarah. And uh, they had no children. And Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. And Sarah was 65 years old. And God told Abraham when he called him, he said, I am going to make you a father of nations and going to give him a baby by Sarah. Now, he was sterile. And she was, well, 65. She was 10 or 15 years past menopause. He lived with her since she was about 16 or 18 years old. He's half-sister. And say. So, He'd been a husband to her all these years until he was 75, and she was 65, and then God comes down and said, I'm going to give you a baby by her. And he staggered not at the promise of God, but believed it. Could you imagine an old man, 75 years old, and a woman, 65, going down, shaking down to the doctor and say, Doctor, I want you to get the hospital ready now. We might call you any night because, you know, we're going to have a baby. <laughs> The doctor would say, y yes, sir, you, uh, <clears throat> uh, as soon as you get on the phone, say, Bird, go after him. There's something wrong. <laughs> and everybody that takes God at his promise is considered by the world crazy. Yes. Paul said in a way that's called heresy, that's the way I worship the God of our Father. Heresy is crazy, we know. The foolishness to the carnal mind. Faith is crazy to everybody but God and the one that's got the faith. That's right. But God promised Abraham, and Abraham believed it. He never said, God, how will it be? He said, all right, God, I believe it. I can see him go home and say, Sarah, let's go down and get us several yards of bird eye and get us some pins and get us some booties. We'll have a baby. Oh, my. First 30 days passed or 28 days. How you feeling, dear? No different. Bless God, we're going to have it anyhow. Amen. How you know God said so? Some of us can be prayed for one night and set in a meeting where the Holy Ghost is falling. The next morning, if we sound well, solid, <laughs> I'm still sick at my stomach a little bit. I can't move my hands anymore, you Abraham seed. Yes. Stagger not the promise of God through unbelief. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some come up in the church, the devil can get amongst a, a group of fine people and Get in there and go to whipping that congregation around. The first thing you know, some say, huh, I'm going to leave this whole thing. What nothing to it in the first place. Abraham seed. First little flaw the devil can show you, then you, you're through with it. It showed you didn't believe it in the first place. Jesus said the kingdom's like a man took a net, went to the sea and cast in the sea. When he come in, he had everything. That's right. That's what, the, that's what a revival catches. What is in a net? you got frogs, spiders, turtles, Crawfish, snakes, and fish. <laughs> yeah. It ain't very long till the turtle said, Well, this is no place for me. Right back in the mud he goes. Yeah. The old water spider looked around and said, Huh, 
I can't have a card game here, so down into the mud she goes again, like a hog to its wallet or a dog to its vomit. Yeah. That's right. And then Abraham seed. Oh, my. Such a disgrace. Yeah. Abraham's seed bleeds God's Word. Yeah. Sit back there and say, yeah, that's God, I'm Pentecostal. And somebody preached something on the Word, there it is, wrote right out. Hallelujah, I don't believe that. No, sir, Abraham's seed. <laughs> Now, if it's some nonsense, of course you don't believe it. But if it's a word, it's the truth. Amen. Right. Abraham's seed holds to that word and nothing else. Another month's passed. Sarah, sweetheart, how you feeling now? You know, another 28 days has passed. How you feeling? No different, darling. Glory to God. It's too much greater miracle than it was that happened last month. A year passed. Hallelujah. Shall I lay these little booties away? No, sir, you keep them there. We're going to have that baby. How you know you're going to have it? God said so. Amen. That settled it. After 25 years passed. Yes. How you feeling, Sarah? No different. Glory to God, it's 25 years more of a miracle now. Amen. He staggered out at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, holding to the Word of God, and calling those things which were not as though they were. Yes. Why? God said so. Yes. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Abraham sees the day. Why, what we call Abraham's seed is weaker than a broth made out of a shad of a chicken to starve to death. <laughs> yes, sir. God wants rugged Christians. He takes God's word literally. It's the same thing. Amen. God said so. That's Abraham's seed. Born of the Spirit and the Word of God. That's what stands. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass. That's it. What God promised, God's able to do. God don't fail. He can't fail. There's one thing God can't do, and that's fail. He cannot fail. That's the only thing He can't do. But He can't fail. When God promises it, it's the truth. It's there forever. It's completely settled forever. When God speaks a word, it's already settled. This world was made by just the word of God. He just said, let there be, and there was. <laughs> the very dirt that you're setting over tonight, the very wood that you're setting on, it's nothing but the Word of God made manifest. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. I feel religious when I think about Abraham. Know that we can be his seed. The seed of Abraham with all these promises. Not only to make sure God held up his hand, swore by himself that he'd do it. The oath is always, con the covenant is confirmed by an oath. And God swore by himself because there's no higher to swear by. He swore by himself that he would do it. Now, what the world, how, what, what's the matter with us? Such a promise as that. A faith built around something like that. A faith built, a word that promised these things in the last days. And here we see them happening right before us and still stoop around. Abraham's seed. Oh, my. I want you to hold on to that Abraham's seed. Genesis 12. What God required of Abraham was a complete separation. Now, today, they want mixers. Oh, when we choose a pastor, he's got to have curly hair and right out of Hollywood, you know, and you can say, ah, oh, man, so pretty, and wears the classes of clothes and drives a super-duper Cadillac and, and uh, so forth like that. It's a good mixer. He does this, and he'll take a little drink once in a while with us to be sociable. He comes to the old lady's card party, and they stitch and sew and sew and stitch and talk about Miss So-and-so and so forth, you know, and all like that. And they have to be that kind of a, a mixer. God said, separate ye fallen ones. Amen. Separation, come out from among them and be not partakers of their unclean things. God wants separation, total annihilation from sin. Separate. That's what's the trouble today, the reason we can't be Abraham. See, we can't separate ourselves from dogmas and creeds and so forth. Call Christianity to the living word. Separate yourself from your unbelief and believe God's Word. God will make it manifest to you. Right. Genesis 12, God said, Separate yourself from all your kindred and from everything around you. Oh, my. We can't separate ourselves from card playing. <laughs> I went in a restaurant today. When brother come in there, I watched some delinquent teenager come in there. And wife and I was trying to eat. And I thought, Praise God, let's hurry, honey, before somebody comes in. And there's some teenager come in there slurping around. I'd be afraid to meet that boy in the dark. 
and he put a machine needle in there and a record and began to play that old boogly woogly stuff and, and uh, stand there with going like this, you know, hit yourself like that. I said, goodness sakes, Mary uh, me, said, don't, don't go there to pay that bill. You wait right here. Let me go with you. She was afraid. Anybody in that... Such things as we have today. A Christian nation. <laughs> Oh, what a thing. Separation! Ninety percent of those singing choirs, the Elvis Presley and a Pat Boone and all that, and a Peabody Ernie or what they call him down here, why, well, it's worse than Judas is a carrot. Judas is a carrot, sold and got 30 pieces of silver. Elvis beat him. He got several fleets of Cadillacs and a lot of popularity. And because these little kids see all that, they'll say, he's very religious. That's the devil! Absolutely! God don't intolerate such stuff as that. That's a blinder here in the last days. Come back to the Word. Separate yourself from all the ungodly things that touch not their things. I will receive you. The gospel, we need to hand it barehanded, not with some ecclesiastical gloves on. Hitting somebody on the back that gets a nest full of rotten eggs again. Making somebody a district man or a presbyter, a bishop or something or another. What does that, how can you have faith when you got respect, or get honor one from another? We look to God in Him alone. Honor comes from God. He's the one that, the honor and beholding His word is a torch and walking like a man or a woman before God. Sure. Complete separation. Genesis 13. Lot went backwards. You remember, they got a little, after they separated themselves and crossed over the river and went into the land, God said, Abraham, I'll give it all to you now, but you haven't fully obeyed me. And the first thing you know, there come up a little fuss about the herdsmen amongst their cattle. And Genesis 13, what happened? The herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of, of Abraham watched Abraham, the brotherly act. He said, let there be no arguments between us. We are brethren. Lot represented the lukewarm church. And he said, look out, take the choice. Whatever you want, you go ahead and take it. You go east, I'll go west, so forth. Uh, you go west, I'll go east. You go north, I'll go south, and so forth. You take your choice. And Lot, already been down in Egypt, and he got the eye on a little popularity. Got a little money in his pockets. That's where the church made his mistake. Yeah. I say this with reverence, brethren. The Pentecostal church would be better off with a tambourine out there on the corner with the old-fashioned men and women with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they would in these great big shrines and morgues you're living in today under all this tiny rock and stuff. Right. They want to act like the rest of them. That's where we got it. Why didn't you stay the way you were, the way God started you out? Amen. The very thing you fussed about, you will turn around and done the same thing. That's the way Lot did. Went down into Egypt. And the first thing you know, he got his eyes on Egypt. And then he looked over and he seen Sodom. Luxury. Take it easy. And he went eastward toward Wimmer, went east. Instead of going west with Abraham, he went east because it was a way of luxury. He went on towards the east. That's the way the churches did today. See, they went backwards. As I said last night, the sun rises in the east and goes west. And the Son of God visited the east first and went westward. They've dimmed it out through 2,000 years. But there will be light in the evening time, this prophet said. Instead of following the sun, they go back to where the sun was. Today you have to speak something about divine healing, about the prophecy, about the nine spiritual gifts or something. Let's go back and see what Moody said, what Sankey said, what Knox said, what Calvin said. They lived in the day when the sun was shining there. We are going on to perfection. Amen. A French scientist said about 300 years ago, fruit of a rolling a ball around the globe. He said, if anybody would ever go the terrific speed of 30 miles an hour, gravitation take them off the earth. Scientifically proved it. You think science ever referred to that? No, sir. They got them going about 2,000 miles an hour, trying to get them to go farther. They don't look back to that. But ministers, we'll look back and see what Moody said, what Sankey said. That's where the sun was. Here's where it's at today. It's on the west coast in the evening time. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Give me the evening light! Amen. Not back to Luther's justification or Wesley's sanctification. But we're at the last day. <laughs> Amen. When the evening lights are shining. When we're at the last time. Follow the sun. But Lot went back because it was easy. 
luxury. Look at Miss Locke when she got back there. Well, she must become the queen of the societies of the city. Locke became the mayor. Or, brother, they had it made. Well, I mean to say, that's the way the people is tucked Miss Lop today. Look the way our people are acting today. Look at our people in churches. Let's look at it. Look at our women. Look at them today. I, I was in Hollywood, uh, or Los Angeles recently. I was waiting for Brother Argenbright to come up. And there stood a girl come up there. I looked and I staggered. I, I looked at her. I thought, I'm a missionary. I've seen plaguery. I've seen leprosy. But I never seen anything like that. She had one of these waterhead haircuts. These, uh, you know, you know what you call, look like a waterhead, you know, the, uh, the first lady. Yeah, like a Jezebel. Like that. And she had blue and green and might have been a nice looking woman. But all that stuff on her, she looked like some African hottentot. And I walked up and was going to pray for the woman. I thought, lady, if you don't mind, I pray for the sick. I never seen anything like that. Tell me what it is. And then another woman got talking to her and she is the same way. Oh, my. Oh, you say that was Presbyterian. Pentecostal. Sure. And the Bible says it's a dishonorable thing for a woman to cut her hair. She does it. She dishonors her head. She dishonors the angel, the angel of light. The seven church angels, the one bringing the light, will stay with the word. Dishonorable. She ought to have hair on her head. My, such as... It used to be wrong for him to do it. it and at first Pentecost, it was wrong. What happened? It did run well. What happened? Some of our Pentecostal women dressing them dresses look like a skin over a wiener out here somewhere. Kind of, that's right. I'm not saying that for no joke. This is no place for joking. Amen. This is the pulpit. Some woman said to me one night, I told them how they're dressing. Said, uh, she said, well, I don't wear shorts. I, I, I wear slacks. I said, that's worse than ever. God said a woman that'll put on a garment pertains to a man's abomination in the sight of God. Yeah. Right? Amen. Let me tell you something, lady. You young woman, dresses yourself out there, you're going to answer at the day of judgment for committing adultery. Yeah. You say, I'm just as pure as a lily. Yeah, but Jesus said, Whosoever looketh up upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her in his heart already. Amen. You might not have to do the act. Whosoever is angry with his brothers out of cause has killed already. See, the only thing you have to do, and if that sinner looks at you the way you're dressed, all carried out the way you are, reared back and pushed out and pushed in, and that kind of a clothes on, then you go out. Uh, listen, that's not jokes. This is the gospel. Amen. And you go like that and some sinner look at you to lust after you at the day of judgment when he answers for committing adultery. Who caused it? You did. Amen. Amen. You answer for it because you presented yourself that way. Why well, you say they, they don't make any other kind of clothes. They make sewing machines and still sell goods. It's no excuse at all. It's because you got away from the word. Amen. That's not popular. That's hard. Some famous preacher come to the end, laid his hands on me, said, I'm going to lay my hands on you and cast out the evil. I said, what? Talking about them women like that. Said, people regard you as a prophet. And said, I said, I'm no prophet. He said, they regard you as that, Brother Branham. And said, you ought to be teaching those people, them women, how to get great spiritual blessings. And keep telling them about their cutting their hair and things like that. They ain't going to listen to that. I said, I know it. Said, well, won't you teach them greater things? I said, how can I preach, teach to them algebra when they don't even know their ABCs? Not even the common decency. Amen. And you man that'll let your women act like that, i got little respect for you being a Christian man. Amen. Seed of Abraham. Amen. 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 I better leave that alone. I'll make you all get up and go home. All right. One of these days you're going to fail finding something up there. Amen. You said don't make any difference. It did to Paul. It did to God in the Garden of Eden. The Bible said that the woman should have long hair. And without it, where are you at? Well, I say it don't make any difference. The Bible said it does. Amen. Don't let the devil reason with you and tell you it's modern, it's all right. It isn't all right. He said, I didn't know it before. You know it now. Amen. Search it and find it if it's right. I'll leave that alone. See, All right. Genesis 13. Modern. Uh -huh. Go back where the sun was. Not where the sun is. Where the sun was. Wife. I imagine Lot's wife. How she got in society. That's the way that we got in society. That's the way we Pentecostals got into it. We become 
set a little organization over here and a little against one against the other and against this and to make you tuck in anything. It's exactly right. What did Samuel say when Israel wanted, wanted to make a king, wanted Saul for a king? Samuel come to him and said, Have I ever taken your money for a living? Have I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord but what come to pass? Oh, they said, Sure, you're God's prophet. You told us the truth and what you said come to pass, but we want the king anyhow. And whenever you started letting down the bars and letting this and that and everything else come in like that, you went modern. And the church is just like the rest of them today. What we need is a Pentecostal house cleaning. Exactly right. Amen. It's a shame a Baptist has to tell you that, ain't it? But it's the truth. Right. I believe the Bible. I believe God's words right. All right. Abraham. Then Abraham took the, in the 14th verse of the 13th chapter, after Lot separated himself and Abraham completely obeyed God, then God come to him. Now he's ready to bless him. And until the Pentecostal church gets away from all of its creeds and dogmas and acting like the world and looking like the world and talking like the world and stay home on Wednesday night to watch We Love Susie and instead of coming to prayer meeting and things like that, paying your tithes out to some preacher out here on some kind of a radio program to make fun of the very thing that you stand for. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And all this kind of stuff that's carried on in the name of Pentecost, it's a disgrace. I speak for the Christian businessman internationally. As many of them sitting here now. Here the other night, here about a year ago it has been, I was in Jamaica. And they had all the slaver to the islands in there one night. And these men getting up testifying, glory to God. I was a little businessman down the corner. Hallelujah. I got four Cadillacs now. Glory to God. And I went back up there to the Flamingo Motel that night. I stood there. I said, I'm ashamed of you. I said, you man here to represent Christ. Trying to tell a businessman how much you got. He's got more than you have or ever will have. That's a whole lot different from the first Pentecostals. The first Pentecost sold what they had and divided amongst the poor and went and preached the gospel. Amen. Right. Some little Swedish singer from Chicago, I ain't going to call his name, he's a precious brother of mine. He stood up and said, Brother Branham, though you, if we believe you to be a prophet, but I'm going to tell you right now you're wrong. I said, tell me where, brother. He said... When them people sold what they had and laid it at the feet of the apostles and distributed it, he said, this is the worst act they ever did. I said, do you mean to tell me the Holy Spirit makes a wrong act? And he said, it was wrong. I'll prove it to you. That's why. He said, then when the persecution rose, they had no place to go. They wandered about everywhere exactly in the will of God, preaching the gospel wherever they went. They had no place to return. God don't make no mistakes. Right. Oh, what a difference is Pentecost it was and Pentecost it is. Yeah. There it is. After Abraham separated himself from Lot. Just exactly what God told him to do. Separate every sin that so easily beset us. Take everything out. There. Then God said, Abraham, now you're heir of all things. Look east. Look west. Look north. Look south. Walk through the land. It's all yours. Amen. You separate your thing, yourself from sin, unbelief. There's only one sin, and that's unbelief. Committing adultery is not a sin. Drinking liquor is not a sin. Telling lies is not a sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. If you believed, you wouldn't do those things. Yes. Certainly. Amen. Jesus said in St. John 5, 24, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life. That's Zoe, the Holy Spirit, because he believed yes. correctly. Now, until you receive that, you're a make-believe. That's in that group. But when they really believe, separating themselves, then when you separate yourself from all your unbelief and believe God, walk out strictly, carrying the commandments, doing everything that's right, then God will say, every promise in the book is yours. Amen. All yours. Turn from it. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all yours. Amen. If you abide me in my word and you, you can ask what you will. It'll be, what? you got to separate yourself first from your unbelief. You say, Brother Bram, you're making it awful close. Jesus said, in the days of Noah, there were eight saved. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. How many is that, Brother Bram? It may be 8,000, maybe 8 million. I don't know what it is. But it's going to be in the minority. One out of every 100,000 or something like that, I'd say. All right. Psychic belief, mental belief, without a born-again experience. 
emotional, ecclesiastical creed. If true, genuine, Holy Spirit's enough, punctuate that word, that word will live. Just exactly like I said it was. Because it's the same Spirit spoken, speaking it through you. It has to live. Certainly it is. Not you the speaker, but the Father that dwelleth in you. He's the one that does the speaking. All right. Abraham, an heir of all things. I, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost like you people did, I like to walk through it like a big arcade. Everything there belongs to me. I'm heir of every bit of it. And if I heir to arcade, I, I'd like to find out what I got. When I become a Christian, I want to know what I own. So if I had an arcade, I'd go through and pull a drawer out and see what's in here. Look over here and see what's in there. Something seemed to be a little bit high up there. I'd get me a step ladder and climb up to it. I'd find out what it was. Something seems a little bit I'm a reacher. I'd get on my knees and start praying until I rise up to it. Hallelujah. It belongs to me. God promised it. Divine healing, the power of God, all these miracles and signs and wonders, He promised it. Yeah. Hey, Brother Bram, how does these things work? By the promise of God. Yeah. Amen. Seed of Abraham. Glory! I feel good. I may look crazy and act crazy, but just let me alone. I feel better this way than I did the other way. Fourteenth chapter. We go to that. Abraham. Now we find out in the fourteenth chapter what happened. The kings come down from the different parts of the country and was confederate with the kings of Sodom and went in and took Sodom, took Lot, Abraham's brother to, and the Lord took him on out, his lukewarm denominational brother, and went off with him. Now remember, God had just told Abraham that everything in the land was his. And the meek shall inherit the earth. Say, we're crazy. Go to take the earth. What's on the earth? Sure, we fall heir to it. Look at Satan said to Jesus, if you fall down, worship me, I'll give you this world. All the kingdoms are all controlled by the devil. Every one of them. Jesus said so. The Bible speaks it. Every nation and every kingdom is controlled by the devil. And Satan said, I own these. These are mine. I'll give them to you if you'll worship me. Jesus knows he fell heir to him in the millennium. So he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He knew that he was heir to it. And today they talk about crazy people worshiping the Lord and being born again. They're afraid of that being born again. They just don't like that idea. And they've substituted something for it. One of them has substituted a handshake. The other a little sprinkle of water. The other stick out his tongue and take a piece of bread. The other dance around on the floor. It's a birth. Yes. I said the other night, a birth is a mess. I don't care where it's at. It's in a pig pen or a hospital room. It's a birth. It's a mess. And so is a new birth. It tears you up. But out of that mess comes new life. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Abraham knew that everything belonged to him. So therefore, when Lot come in, he said, now, wait a minute. Lot was taken out by a cruel hands of enemies. He said, that's my brother, and I'll go after him. I remember there's about seven or eight kings there. They went together. He'd come down and took everything and swept out with it. And when they went out, Abraham took his servants and went after him to bring back his lost brother. That's a real Christian. Went after his lost brother. What did he do when he found him? He slaughtered the kings. And returned back, bringing his brother after the battle. Look, there was one king come out to meet him coming back. Melchizedek. Melchizedek. What was he? He had no father. He had no mother. He never was born. He never does die. Without father, without mother, without beginning of days or ending of life. It wasn't the son of God because he had father and mother. Both was born and died and rose again. But this man never had father nor mother. God. Yeah. Certainly it's the only thing that is eternal. And he met Abraham after the battle was over. Showing you to Abraham's seed. After we go after our fallen brother. Yeah. And the battle's over. What did Melchizedek serve? Wine and bread, the communion. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When the battle's over, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Come back, bringing his lost brother back home again. Restoring him back. And when the battle was over, Melchizedek met him and gave him the communion. Jesus said, I'll not eat or drink the fruit of the vine no more until I eat it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Yes, sir. Now, the battle was over. Abraham had come back, the 14th chapter, and the victor met him when he was coming in with the victor. 
Genesis 15 now, before we close, because it's closing time now. Listen to one more thing before we go, and I have to take this up tomorrow night again, because I just haven't got to my subject, I get to my place yet on Jehovah Jireh. I want to get it down there if the Lord willing. Now, on the 15th chapter, I got here that the covenant was confirmed to Abraham. The confirmation of the covenant. In other words, it's when God oathed and when God made the promise and confirmed the promise to Abraham. In the 15th chapter, we find out that the confirmation of the oath that God said, Abraham said to God, the heir of my house is still this Eliezer of Damascus. And he said to him, but that is not your heir. For it's one from your own bowels is your heir. And he promised him, he said, how will I know this? Oh, now, brethren, here's something that'll wake you up. Watch him. He said, go get me a she-goat, a, a three years old, a she-heifer, three years old, and a ram, a three years old. And Abraham took him and two turtle, a turtle dove and a pigeon. Now, the turtle dove and pigeon has a representation of these three-year-old animals, and there was three of them. Now, he's going to make the covenant confirm the covenant. Now, listen close. Don't miss it. And then we pick up tomorrow night when he meets him here again, the Lord willing. Watch. Now, he said, take me a, a heifer of three years old, a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, a pigeon and a turtle dove. And Abraham went and got the animals, and he cut them in half and laid them piece to piece. But the turtle dove and dove, he did not uh, separate the turtle dove and pigeon. Turtle dove and pigeon is the same family. So that represented divine healing, which in both covenants is by faith, see, that they're healed, just one to the other. other. If the old covenant had divine healing, you know, how much more is this one got? <laughs> see, if the old sacrifice had healing, what about this one, which is much better? See, now... But notice what he done here. He took these three animals and cut them apart and laid them piece by piece. And then Abraham got back. Now, that was a sacrifice. And he watched until the sun was going down and fowls come down out of the air on Abraham's sacrifice. Vultures. And Abraham cast them out. Shoot them away. What's it the type of? Abraham's seed in the last day, casting out devils from the sacrifice. Casting away from the sacrifice. God promised it, the sacrifice, Christ the saint, yesterday, today, from ever, and all them unbelieving spirits trying to devour it. The man of God, the Abraham seed, stands there casting out the devils away from it. Confirming the covenant now, the confirmation. Showing that Abraham's seed in, I mean the royal seed, remember the natural seed failed because accepted law instead of the word of grace. And so has it in this roundabout in the Gentiles the last day, but there is a seed, royal seed with the word, stands true, casting out devils, doing great signs and wonders. Getting all the unbelief away from the Word, keeping the sacrifice clean, keeping the Word holy, keep it reverence, not put anything with it, add anything to it, just keeping it away, standing on guard, let nothing touch it. Now notice, there come a deep sleep upon Abraham, death, and after the deep sleep he saw a furnace of fire, which is hell. Smoking that every sinner ought to go to. But before there went a little white light. Watch that little white light. Went in between and separated these sacrifices. Went in between it. God making a confirmation that what to Abraham's seed he would do. Now, the Jews always believed God was one and God is one. But he was showing here by these three clean sacrifices that the Trinity of God would be represented in one in the Godhead body.
Let's just thank the Lord tonight, Heavenly Father, Lord. God, we love your word. Where did Abraham see tonight, Lord? We recognize, Lord, God, your gospel truth in this hour through your prophet, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word tonight, Lord. Amen. The key of F. Let's sing that. Aren't you glad God has provided a sacrifice? He's provided everything we need. He's provided a lamb, pillar of fire. Brother, sister, we just need to yield to him. Amen. Oh, teach me, Lord. Let's worship the Lord. To wait down on my knees telling your own good time you answer my pleas teach me not to rely on what others do but to wait in prayer for an answer from you. Oh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint oh teach me lord oh teach me lord to Now teach me, Lord, to wait while hearts are aflame. Help me humble my pride. Oh, and call on your name. Keep my faith renewed and just keep my eyes oh on thee lord help me be on this earth what you want me to be and they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength Oh, they shall mount up as wings as an eagle. Oh, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord, teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. To wait Amazing grace Oh how sweet Thank you Lord tonight for your grace That you provided the sacrifice Lord Jehovah Jireh In this hour Lord Me Oh, I once was lost, oh, but now we thank you, Lord, tonight. Oh, was blind, oh, but now I see, oh, through many dangers, toils, and snares, through many dangers toils and snares oh I have already come oh tis grace that brought oh me safe oh thus far 
all stand and sing it when we've been there 10,000 years and when we've oh been there 10,000 years oh bright shine ning as the Let's just praise them now tonight. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. And praise God. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God, oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. We're going to let you go tonight, thanking the Lord Jesus, amen, for an opportunity to be in his house. Amen. We just see our sister Selena back there. God bless you, honey. Good to see you. Amen. Good to see you, sir. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful, God, that we are Abraham's seed, as our prophet cried out. Lord, examples we see, Lord, people that live around us, we work with and profess Christianity and God, and our hearts ache. Lord, the hour we live in, Lord. God, Abraham, see the life, Lord, as we heard tonight. We want to live that life, Lord. We thank you for your people tonight that have come out to your house. Just be with them as they go. Till we meet back and be your will Sunday morning again to rejoice. Gather around your word in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. God bless you tonight. I believe Jesus saved. Oh, and his blood washes whiter than snow. Oh, I believe Jesus saves. Oh, and his blood washes whiter than snow. I am coming to Jesus for rest. Rest such as the purified know, and my soul of thirst to be blessed. Oh, to be washed and be whiter than snow. Oh, I believe, oh, Jesus saved, and his blood washes whiter than snow. Oh, I believe, oh, Jesus saved. And his blood washes whiter than snow. Oh, in the sweet, oh, 
by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore oh in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love oh and the blessings that hallow our day oh in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore